five and six, and somebody got feeling for it. Our announcements this morning, we have Compassion Ministries Tuesday morning this week. Ladies Bible study, and also that's Tuesday at 10 o'clock. That's that can that McDonald's dining room again? Yep, we are. We have to be out by 11 o'clock, but we were out at quarter after 11. They didn't say nothing. They just shut the lights <laughs> out on us. <laughs> Ladies Bible study, McDonald's again this week. And board meeting this week also, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Wednesday Bible study, Zoom from the church. And let's see, what else we have on here? Birthdays. Have we any birthdays? Well, oh, before you do birthdays, I got it. Okay. Chris got something. That's why I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> um, we got this field note getter for <coughs> Raymond. This being held the field notes at Elsie, but the dinners at the Bannister, the Barn Grill. We've got the food together. People have, and we're, we're just doing sandwiches, a couple of salads, and desserts. Things. So it's not a big where you're hauling a lot of stuff. But I am looking for a guy who will drive, you know, two guys to help pick up the stuff, take it over to Bannister, and I need two women who will be over there to receive it, set it up. It won't be a big setup, so it's not a lot of work. <laughs> And when they're done, just to pack it up, and the guys can bring it back to the church, and I will meet them here and take care of it, because I've got compassionate ministry. I can't be in two places at one time, guys. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I could use a big salt. <laughs> so, I need, if you're willing to step up and help with this, I really appreciate it. Please come and see me after the service because I just don't know what else to do. I hate to tell them that we can't do it either. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. Okay. Anybody was able, Chris, you need some help Tuesday. Okay, now then. Jim, let me, let me point out that in your bulletin you have an insert with the uh, uh, the things of that also, some of you may not be able to make the uh, funeral, and Smith Family uh, fu uh, Funeral Homes streams it on Facebook, and there's instructions on how that you can uh, pick it up on Facebook if you would like to do that. So uh, that's that's what we've got there. Okay. Now, any birthdays this week? Any birthdays this week? I don't see any hands being up. I've got to take my glasses off to see you, but I've got to put them on to read this. <laughs> put them on, everybody want one big blur. How about anniversaries? Any anniversaries this week? No birthdays, no anniversaries. That was mine. Yeah. It was mine last Monday. No big deal. Oh, we gotta sing Happy Anniversary to make it a big deal. It's not a big deal. Happy Anniversary.
God, and we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come to your house to, to worship you here, Lord. Pray that thou bless each one here this morning, God. Help the Lord to feel your presence. Pray, God, that thou be with each one who takes part, each one who uh, needs you here, Lord. Pray that thou just bless, have your own way in this service. That's Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Let's remain standing and let's uh, sing, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. We've got a lot of things to be thanksgiving for, don't we?
to help feed those in need. You are great. And we just give you praises for all the people that help with this ministry. And we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, praises and concerns. We don't have any praises this morning, just concerns. Good thing I got a outline in front of me. It's been a while since I've done this. Doing a good job. Chris? Okay. Um, Bob's homesick. He's got this cold. He gets every year. And Ed Henry goes in for his heart surgery tomorrow. Yeah, heart surgery? Mm-hmm. So Who was Henry. that? Ed Henry. Yeah, Ed Henry, my neighbor. So he's what, 85, 85, 86? He's 85. He's three years older than I am. So now. he um, is going in for his heart surgery. Nothing to him with skin and racket bones as it is. I know. <laughs> he, he outworks Bob continuously. Amazing. Anyone else? Any praise, any concerns? Lisa? Unspoken. Unspoken requests. Oh, sure there are many unspoken requests around. Yeah. Wow. I forgot to mention my um, sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> she's under quarantine now for two weeks. But she's got the COVID. Her son has come down with it. He's in his 50s. So it's going through the family. So, you know, please pray for their um, healing during this time after losing my brother. And, um, pray that the Lord continues to work. Right. Uh, my mom saw the heart surgeon on Tuesday. He gave us the good news that she can have a Tavar procedure, so he won't have to open her up, but um, that she doesn't see that doctor until November 17th, so we're talking probably the beginning of December. So. Okay. Keep, keep Judy in her prayers. Anyone else? Prayer course. Prayer course. Change my heart. New one. It's a new course. <laughs> and I don't know how many know out there, but let's stand. And uh, those who know this course, sing along with me. And uh, we ask God to change our hearts. Amen. Daily. We have to daily <clears throat> have communion with God. Change my heart.
thank you so much that we can be called your children. Father, as we come before you today, you've done a lot of wonderful things for us this week. Father, you've helped us in some difficult situations. Father, you've walked with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Father, you've guided and directed decisions. Father, you've helped us. And we, as we come before you, we want to thank you for your wisdom and your guidance and your love that gives us understanding and proper decisions to make. We praise you. Father, also there have been a number of requests come in. Father, here's... Um, Ed Henley, uh, been praying for him for some time. Father Chris's uh, brother's family. Lord, uh, we think of, of uh, Betty Lover. Lord, how our heart goes out to her. Now we thank you for the grace that you've given her. But Father, she's going to need you. And we're asking that as we as the church come around her, Father, you know, we're doing the best we can with, this, with the circumstances we have. And Father, what we're asking is that the, what we feel is a cup of cold water that we're offering to her. That Father, she will sense the deep love that not only we have for her and the care that we have for her and her family, but also your love. Father, we pray that you continue to walk with Lee and Arlene Ash, the sudden passing of their son. Uh, Father, uh, we do ask then too that you be with the ones that have, are just uh, uh, typically on the list, the different ones that uh, are there. Be with each need. Now, Father, as we come before your throne, we pray for our, our world. <clears throat> Lord, it's been another week of violent persecution, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, God. Won't you please bring an end to this scourge that's trying to sweep our earth? Father, we pray that you would take Satan by the throat yes. and that you would bring this to an end. Yes. Father, the cruelty and, and that, we, that we witness, we do pray for our brothers and sisters. Father, we ask that your love would fill their heart. Father, we pray that you would give them wisdom as they deal with their persecutors and most of all, we ask that the love of Christ would shine through them so that their persecutors would be convicted and would turn to you and that they would become our brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, Father, please. And yet as we pray for the salvation of our persecutors, Lord, we pray for the salvation of our uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, or brother of family members and friends who are out of the ark of safety. Father, many of them are just absolutely indifferent to you and the things of God. And what we're asking is, is that somehow, some way, you would wake them up to their needs. Father, that they would come to you and be saved. Father, be with our nation. Be with our president. Be with our governor. Be with our legislators, our judges, our civil servants. Lord, we're asking that there be a great turning uh, among them. And that, Father, they would uh, come to pick to take your worldview and not the, uh, not the worldview of the secular humanist and the uh, socialist. Father, please, as we come before you then too, we ask that you'd be with our community. We thank you for the peace we enjoy. We thank you for the protection we've enjoyed. Yet, Father, we're seeing 
uh, the COVID cases increase, and we're simply asking, would you place a hedge of protection, a shield, around your people and protect us in a special way? Be with our congregation. Walk with us, Father. Help us during this time to grow spiritually, physically. Father, we pray that you that you that we would uh, be able uh, to reach out. Finally, Lord, uh, be with our, our service. Everything is said, everything is sung, everything is done. May it be to your name's honor and glory. For we've asked it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like for us to say, John, John, there's a seat right up here beside Kathleen. <laughs> Just like in school. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I had to sit. <laughs> you did a bad boy, you got to sit by the teacher. <laughs> and don't you forget it. <laughs> oh, you know. I don't know what your week has been like, but uh, but with uh, I there were actually three deaths that happened around us this week, and whenever that happens, I uh, I just need special grace. I really do. And as I get older, it gets harder. I, I you'd think you know you might get tough, but you can't. You can't. But through it. Jesus was with me. Jesus was with us. We had some difficult situations. Jesus gave us wisdom on how to do things. Jesus has worked through this. And I just think that what we need to say and shake our fist in the devil's face and say, Isn't he wonderful? Amen? Amen. 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 Well, the people dropped what they were doing. 
They ran outside, and when they got out there, he said, ha, 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 fooled you, fooled you. Well, it was a little while later, he decided that he'd do it again. Ran into town screaming, there's a wolf, they've got the lambs, they're eating the, all of that uh, uh, kind of people dropped in and ran out when they got there and go, ha ha, fooled ya, fooled ya. Well, it wasn't too long until the wolf finally did come. And the wolf came in and he got the flock and he was tearing up the lambs and he was eating all the lambs. And the little boy runs into town and he says, come quickly, there's a wolf. He's destroying the flock. And the people looked at him and they said, we're not going to be fooled another time. And they kept on working and they kept on going and the wolf, to stop, the wolf destroyed the entire flock. Now boys and girls, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that we want to be known for telling the truth. Now we're living in a time where a lot of people are telling a lot of lies and they seem to be getting away with it. But there's coming a day when the wolf is going to come and it's going to destroy the flock. So remember boys and girls, always tell the truth. Always tell the truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. The church loves you. And so do I. Amen? Amen. No one signed up for today and so you get me <laughs>
the 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 uh, the bigness of it. When we say spiritual death and being separated from God, you know, we're sitting here and we've we're Christians and we've been around uh, Jesus and we believe in Jesus and we have a prayer life and we walk with the Lord and, and we have all those things. We have a difficult time comprehending what spiritual death and separation from God really means. I just I want you to think about it. Think about your week. How could you have gotten along this week without your relationship with Christ? You can't do it. But if you were separated from God, talk about being dead. That's what he uses. He uses those terms. You're separated from God. You are separated from eternal life. There is none. And that idea of being separated from God and one of the things that Scripture teaches us, he that has Christ has eternal life. Not will have, has eternal life. It's something that we possess now. And that eternal life is that relationship with Christ and our Heavenly Father. And believe me, that idea of being eternal and life is big. And so we don't want to, um, uh, to uh, what should I say, minimize the idea of spiritual death because it becomes the, 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 the being separated from God becomes the literally death of, uh, of everything that's there. Now, um, what the plan was, and if you read the scripture and put it together, the plan was to have eternal life through their relationship with God. They walked with God in the cool of the day, every day. And that time of being with God, and that time of in His presence, that thing gave them life and, and uh, allowed them to carry on that did it. Uh, trivia question. What's the cool of the day? Morning. If you take a look and watch the temperatures, the coolest part of the day is morning. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so, well, what's that say about waking up and having some devotions in the morning, right? I mean, some volumes get spoken uh, just by the word pictures that we give. But that was what the plan was. But Adam and Eve didn't want a, a, a relationship with God, a subordinate relationship with Him. They wanted to be like God. And so they succumbed to the deception and they ate the fruit. And yes, they did become like God, knowing good from evil. But in doing that, it destroyed the relationship between them and their Creator. And death followed. Sin destroyed that plan. Romans 5.12 puts it this way. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. Death is the most powerful weapon 
of the enemy. Now, the best example of this, and of course the examples are, 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 are all through the Bible, all through life, and whatever. But what power that Satan has, <coughs> death is his ultimate weapon. Now, if you look at Jesus, what you get there is his playbook. Uh, Jesus begins to teach, and so what happens is uh, the people who are his minions uh, don't like what he's saying, so the first thing they try and do is trip him up. Well, they can't trip him up, and so the next thing they try and do is they try and lie about him. Uh, they try and miss, uh, they twist his words and they, they, they uh, uh, accuse him of saying things he never said. Uh, when that didn't work, they began to threaten him. They took him uh, into court, uh, they brought uh, false witnesses, they beat him and tried to uh, physically abuse him into submission, and when they couldn't do that, they crucified him. Okay, does this playbook sound familiar? Okay, it's it's an old old playbook. It's what Satan has used, uh, you know, throughout the history of the world. But what happens here is he thought he won. When Christ was crucified and laid in the grave, everybody else, it was over. Right? Everybody else, it was over. But Jesus beat death and rose from the grave. Amen? See what we've got going here? Hebrews 2.14 put it this way. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil. Christ did that. Humanity is destined for physical and spiritual separation from God. Okay, that's where we're headed. But, through the prophet Isaiah, God makes a tremendous promise to us. On the mountain of the Lord, on the mountain of the Lord Almighty, will prepare a feast of rich food for all people. Uh, the banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On the mountain, uh, on this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples. Okay, what's a shroud? A shroud is a winding that they wrap the bodies in. When they talk about Jesus was wrapped in linen, that's a shroud. Uh, uh, we've all heard of the Shroud of Turin, okay? It was a burial cloth. And so he says, on this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds, notice, all peoples. Not just the Jewish people, but all peoples. The sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears from their face. I'm looking forward to, to that time. I'm getting tired of crying. I'm getting tired of crying. He will remove the disgrace of His people from all the earth. Notice the way He ends this. The Lord has spoken. Amen. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, this prophecy was fulfilled when Christ rose from the dead. Uh, we read in 2 Timothy 2.10, And now he has revealed this grace 
through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has abolished death and illumined the way to what? Life and immortality through the gospel. Notice we've got the way, how do we get there? We've got this thing that's been there, Adam brought in, and now he reveals the way to life and immortality, what? Through the good news. I say that's pretty good news. Amen. That's pretty good news. Now, we have to understand something. Satan has continued his re rebellion. But death no longer means absolutely eternal separation from God. It did at one time, but not now. Why? Jesus died, rose again, revealed the way uh, to eternal life through the gospel. Now, we've got to keep this in mind, that, uh, that, that Satan is a defeated devil. But... He keeps on fighting. He stays in rebellion. And we must understand that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan are in war, have been in war, and will remain in war until Christ comes through and, and uh, uh, wipes it off the face of the earth and everything goes into the lake of fire, right? We have to understand that war is going on. Uh, but he's a defeated devil. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Okay? He's going to put sin and he's going to put selfishness and he's going to put lying and all that kind of stuff under his feet. But the last thing he goes is death. I love this scripture. I use it at a lot of my funerals where we read when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. Whoa. Death was the end of everything, right? But now we're talking about the mortal being clothed, the perishable being clothed with the imperishable and immortality um, and, and the mortal with immortality then the saying that is written will come to pass. Death has been swallowed up in victory. I sat with Betty and some of her family yesterday and the day before. But what is amazing is they were not overly wrought emotionally. And as I heard Raymond's story, I began to know why. Raymond was saved as a child. He's lived for God all his life. I didn't realize it. At one time, uh, he handled the Sunday night service, preaching. He's lived for God. He's served humanity. He's uh, a jolly fellow. And as we talked about at the beginning of the service, death for him was a door. He's with his Savior. He's in possession of that. And frankly, I have done lots and lots of funerals. I will tell you, funerals of those who have made their calling and election sure is a homecoming. And yes, we hate the separation, but it's a joy. It's a joy. Raymond is with the Lord. His eternal life that he began here is now in full bloom in the immediate presence <coughs> of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in the, and in the place of His Father. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. 
We live with this. We live our land with this. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Death was destroyed. Death was destroyed. Separation of physical death is still painful. Paul talks about, I would not have you grieve as others who have no hope. We still grieve, and we grieve deeply, but we don't grieve hopelessly because the separation of physical death is not final. Jesus <coughs> brought victory over sin and death and hell. Brothers and sisters, we need not fear death we have been given eternal life and we live in the fact that God, through Jesus Christ, took was to be our mortal enemy, eternally separating us from God and turned it into the very door of heaven. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, We've done our best to share your word. Father, too, we ask that you would, and we thank you for what you've done. Father, uh, I ask that you would take these very feeble words that we've given today, and we ask that you would take them to the hearts of this dear congregation. And Holy Spirit, would you do your office work and reveal to them what is meant behind these scriptures and these words. And Father, may we live, may we live rejoicing in our eternal life that happens because we have a relationship We ask these things in the name of our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we stand this morning, and as we listen to the message this morning, well, thank you, Pastor, for that. Spoke to our hearts, spoke to mine. And we sing, This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Amen. 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 Amen.